This talk is called Breaking Pro World. Uh, my name is uh, Stephen Little. Um, you may know me from uh, Moose and some of the other stuff. Um, and uh, so, what this talk is about is uh, at uh, YAP CNA, and then I think again at YAP EU, and then at OSCON, and then YAP Asia, uh, Jesse Vincent um, gave a talk called 516, Pro 516 and Beyond, in which he basically sort of laid out his ideal future plan uh, for, for the future Pearl. Which is all great, except for, wait a second, about a week ago, I think maybe two weeks ago, uh, Jesse resigned his pumpkin. So, um, long thing, long thing, <laughs> uh, Ricardo, um, who I, I checked with before this talk to make sure that everything I'm saying here is still in agreement with. Um, he may change that eventually, but, uh, but anyway, thanks to Jesse. I think it's a good thing. Just, just did a wonderful job in, in handing it on to Rick, you know, keeping new blood. I think that's a lot of what the, uh, the, the new Pearl core development process uh, is about. Make sure you have fresh people coming in and out. Uh, so, back to Jesse's idea. So, uh, a big part of his idea was sort of reduce, or the part that uh, really appealed to me was the idea of reducing the Pearl core down. Um, it's a giant, complex beast. Um, any core hackers in here know exactly what I'm talking about. I know nothing about what I'm talking about Mac. <laughs> or I'm not that brave. Um, but I've heard the horror stories, and I've seen the pictures. So. Um, but the, the idea of reducing down the core, you know, we have a lot of old, uh, sort of old things in there, uh, stuff that's very Unix-specific, uh, formats. How many people use formats on a daily basis? Right, exactly. So, something like that. It does. <laughs> something like that, you know, it, it could go away. Or the idea was sort of to move things into modules. <clears throat> so, the stuff that's in the core that's not used as much could be ported over to modules and then through a bunch of. Oh, the, the, the wavy arrow is there because there's so much hand waving. In this <laughs> so, uh, the, but the idea, and it's, it's a good idea, and how, however much we can get to it. Um, is another thing, but the idea of moving some of the lesser used parts of the core into modules um, and with, with uh, some of the new technologies uh, that are in the core, like the, um, uh, the, the, the custom keyword stuff, uh, that kind of stuff can make it possible so that it really is transparent. Your old code, your, your old, old code will still run. Um, again, this is theory. <laughs> so, in my opinion, okay, if we get 100% of Jesse's plan implemented, awesome. But even if we get 75, that would be amazing, okay? And even if we could just get 50, that's still a huge step in what I believe to be the right direction. Sorry, I've got two laptops here. One with, <laughs> one with, uh, one with my notes and one without. Um, and basically, the idea is that a simpler language is a more evolvable language, okay? And this is a favorite quote of mine uh, that I found from Larry. Um, and I believe he, he said this, uh, I think this was from when uh, Pearl 5 had just started to come out. And one of the things that he always said about Pearl 5 was the modules will be what will define it. And that eventually has become CPAN, um, which we all know and love. Okay. Uh, so the, making the language, bringing the language closer to that. I think is it, ultimately bringing it closer to a core vision, and therefore you know, making it a more evolving language. Perl has been around for longer than some of the people here have been alive. Okay, so it's 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 it's, it's an old language, but it's always kept up. Uh, you know, it's always reinvented itself. I always like to compare it to Madonna. Okay, <laughs> in the '80s was one thing. Madonna in the late '80s was another. 90s and so on, she always reinvented herself and she's managed to say relevant even up until now. Uh, Perl sort of does the same thing. Um, and it does it, I think, better than any other language out there. Um, so, my proposal, which is still in flux, um, uh, is, is to put some sort of a mop into Perl 5. So, how many of you know what I mean when I say mop? So I'll skip through the next slide. So. <laughs> um, uh, a mop is basically an API into your class system. So just as like if you if you have an API for networks, 
you have sockets, you have connections, all this kind of stuff. There are abstractions over some of the core concepts in there. A mop is basically the same thing, but for objects. So classes, attributes, methods, uh, all that kind of stuff. Um, it's, um, whenever my mom asks me, what is this moose thing you did? <laughs> I, I like to explain it as... <laughs>
you know what, it's time to really come up with a real true instance type for Pro 5 to really take the dive into uh, uh, object-oriented programming the same way everybody else does. If you, if, quick digression. If you think back to when Pro 5 first came out, the Pro 5 OL was first introduced. <coughs> I believe Java was not out yet. Python was like just sort of there. Ruby was maybe still, it might have been in Mox's desktop and nowhere else. Okay, the state of art of OO at the time was C++. Okay. Um, C front. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, things have changed. Things have changed a lot in, in those last 20 years. So yeah, I, I think it's time to really say, let's break with the old, move on with the new, keep the old. This is pro. We never throw anything away. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. But we're going to add more on top of it because this is pro. Um, so uh, to quickly explain how the how the attributes work. So has works a lot like mine, okay? Except for instead of creating a lexical scope, it creates what I call an instance scope, okay? So when you run a method, the uh, the the instance. That you're, that you're, the invocant that you're, that you're uh, uh, calling the method upon contains uh, essentially what is a lexical pad of some sorts that is defined through the has keywords. Okay, so that x and that y are are within your scope, validly compiled, and those the x and y will represent the values that uh, that that are stored currently in, in the instance. Okay, does that make sense? Anybody have any questions or anything? How does that work with inheritance? Let's see. <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> too much said. Uh, yeah, I have a question on that. Oh, okay. Uh, your syntax is somewhat like most of the syntax declare. Were yes. you tempted to make it exactly the same to allow people to port over easier? Did you consider that? Uh, the present cons? So here's the thing the Moose, whatever version, will be implemented on top of this. The, the idea was to actually uh, provide a bit more of a general low-level mechanism that purposely didn't do as much as Moose. Moose does a lot. Moose is a big, lumbering beast, as Moose are. You um, know, you can that this keyword to mean something to, to, to have, have slightly different syntax. So, syntactic sugar will just translate from... To some degree, Moose. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it, uh, if we have enough time at the end, I can show you uh, Jesse, who's the current uh, uh, maintainer of Moose. Um, he actually re-implemented class mop on top of this, and it beca it, it's very easy to start adding things on top of it, because all, all the, 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 the largest chunk of Moose is adding the whole mop, is, is putting the whole object system together in there. You get it for free with this, so you're just adding all the sort of little sugary bits on top of it. Um, and, and by the way, I mean, well, I think the method has in class, I, I, I kind of want to stick with those, but this, the is RW, I've had many debates with people whether this is good, whether it should be in the core, whether it shouldn't. Uh, my personal idea is it, you shouldn't have anything like that. This is, this is actually, the is RW is actually metadata. If you, if you think of uh, Java annotations or C sharp attributes or Python decorators, all that kind of stuff, they're all compiler directives to help tell the compiler what to do uh, to add more features and functionality. So that's, that's sort of how I envision the, the stuff like the isRW. It's extra metadata that ends up getting to the mop in some way that you can then use to expand upon uh, stuff. So whether we actually add accessory generation into the core of the mop is still sort of up for grabs. Um, personally, I'd like to not have it in the core, but have the default provided so that if you wanted to override it and do something completely different, you wouldn't have to actually wipe out what I had in there. You'd be able to actually start with a base raw thing. But that is very detailed. So you call them just like anything else. Um, it, there, there, there's no, there's, there's, the declaration of the class is new, but everything after that is pretty much Perl the way we know and love. Um, we do do the, uh, 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 we allow you to set the, the attributes uh, through the constructor with name value pairs. Um, this is also overridable within the mob, so if you don't like that or you want to do something different with that, that's always possible. But that's sort of the default that gives you gives you that access. So here's our um, extensions. 
Um, so we're, not, we're actually showing access to the attributes. We'll get to that in a second. Um, but here we extend point. And again, you notice it's the, it's the parentheses. So this is, again, that metadata. So we're, we're passing the metadata saying, please inherit from this into the mop during compile time, and the mop can then do what it wants with it. Um, and this is probably controversial, but I don't think we need multiple inheritance anymore. Multiple inheritance <laughs> is <laughs> ugly, it's a problem, it makes everything more complicated. If we can have roles, like we have in Moose, we just have no need for multiple inheritance anymore. So, currently, uh, a single inheritance system. If people, enough people complain, whatever, we'll change multiple inheritance. Uh, but I think we can provide a better alternative. I, I think that's a better way to go. Um, so, because we have single inheritance, we can call super and never have to worry about it. We'll know where to find it. It's all good. We don't have to do the next method or anything like that. Um, so, super obviously calls the clear from there, which clears it and does that. So, it's very straightforward. <coughs> it's very simple. Um, any more questions? Any? Uh, is your view that the code has method modifiers? Method modifiers. So rather than calling super, you just have an after method on, on clear. Yeah. So I have a love hate relationship with the method modifiers. They're 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 nice, but they're also problems. They, they, they can they can be difficult. They can be problematic. And they actually don't belong in the mob, in my opinion. Uh, just being able to attach to uh, a subroutine or a method and and inject something in. I mean, that's Perl. You can fuck with things at that level in Perl. That's that's that, that's the um, so I think they can be added on top of it later. Um, they, they, they really complicate the mob in a way that's not necessary, I don't think, for now. Especially if you can add it. I mean, this is a problem. Just, just write a module. <laughs> <laughs> Release it to CPAN. It's all good. Um, okay, so here's a slightly more complicated example. Um, uh, and anybody who's read some of the Moose cookbook will, will know these examples. I pulled them straight from there. Um, so a uh, bank account has balance. Uh, this shows um, we have signatures. Woohoo! And methods. No more my shit. Uh, or my money, my, my whatever. Uh, and it, you know, I think this is really nice. The balance plus equals the amount. It's clear. It's straightforward. You're, you're, you're not mucking it up with having to access the, the, uh, the instance hash and get it out of there and do all, that, all those things that we always have to do all the time. What is, is our own I'm sorry? What does is RO mean if it's not stopping you doing other value plus equals other amount? <coughs> it just it's, it's, it's a it's an accessor generator. Okay. So it's generating a read-only accessor. Um, within your class, all the class members should be available to you. Can I not back to you, please? <laughs> you don't have to. It's an American bank. You let me withdraw money if I haven't got enough. It's an American bank. <laughs> <laughs> if you try and take your money back from the bank, uh, so. Uh, but you know, things like the plus equals, that, that's nice. It's a quick little bit of syntax. Um, you don't have to worry about the fact that you have to unpack your instance, anything like that. Um, you know, balance, I mean, it, it's just like working with another variable. Okay. Um, now, the inevitable question is, well, what if I put my balance up there? Well. What would happen if you did that lexically? It's, it's just like a lexical scope. You, one, you're fucking it up. Two, uh, <laughs> it's just going to override it. It's going to override it in the lexical pad. So it's one of those things that here you go. Here's here's the rope. Shoot yourself in the foot all you want. Okay, this is pro. Um, so <laughs> you wouldn't do it. You just don't do it. It's not smart. Um, computer. Um, all right. So yeah, this one didn't get. New slide software, sorry, so this one got a little small. Mm -hmm. um, so this actually uh, addresses the question before about what do you do, um, how, how do those, uh, the has variables work with inheritance? So um, they don't, okay, because you're, <clears throat> the scope is gone. The scope is in the superclass. So you have to have some kind of accessor. Um, Self-balance, okay. Um, in general, this, I, I think this is smart. This is, this is how most other languages work as well. Um, 
if you you're, you're creating a, 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 a member or an attribute or whatever you want to call it within the class, it's private to that class essentially. Um, if you want to provide access to it outside of it, and the subclass is outside, okay, um, we're so used to all this sort of deep fuckery and incest and weird things that Perl can do to get this and that. I mean, the hash based instance alone just sort of led to a lot of weird stuff. This is, it's a little bit of a strictness, um, but, it, but it tries to keep sensible strictness. Um, we ended up with it exactly the same factor in Perl 6. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I borrowed a lot from Perl 6. Yeah. How do you balance uh, that? Uh, with the withdrawal and the deposit. Okay. So you if you wanted to make it read write, which, I mean, yeah, I don't think British banks do that. So <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
Um, and, like I said, it's just like a sub. You're, you're putting it in the stash inside the package. So, so getting to it should be just as easy as that. But how, there's, how are you, if someone, if you do that and someone says use full bar, then how the hell is it going to find full bar in the Yeah, so that's a tricky bit we haven't fixed in the prototype yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's, there's, there's complexities with that. Honestly, when you think about it, the use should be bringing in a package. So again, if you, uh, again, if you think of the job example, if you import on a class name, job is going to say, what the hell are you doing? Okay, you import on the package. Okay, and so you uh, should really, honestly, be pulling in the package. Now that said, if you wanted to put bar in its own file, okay, so if you wanted to have a bar PM and just define, uh, instead of having package foo there, have class foo colon colon bar. Right now, that just works, okay? Because it, it essentially loads the PM file, evaluates it. The, the foo has been uh, already generated. It, Perl just kind of is okay with, with the, the, the sort of workaround with that. And that does work on the prototype. Um, so yeah, there's, there's a few bits in there, and that's a lot where we have to figure out exactly how this is stored, um, because that will define how we, how we pull that in. Um, and actually, I talked to Jesse Vincent, too, about the possibility of importing. So uh, if you've ever used the, the alias fragment to shorten your class names, okay? Personally, I like long package names because I like deep, organized hierarchies, but they get a pain in the ass to write. So uh, <laughs> being able to say to the package, also, please import these classes and just have them as, as, as the, the, the main words, or the, the, just, just the short word in there is a possibility, too. Uh, so. <clears throat> so, because it's just within a package, it has access to the scope of the package, okay? So, we all have our own tricks for private methods, okay? And all of them suck to some degree or another, okay? There's no good private method implementation out there, because the reality is, is a private method should not ever enter into your dispatch table, ever. It should only be dealt with within the class, you know, a, a lot of the ones on CPAN will, and this is a pet peeve of mine, uh, it'll look to see if the caller is the same as the class, and if it isn't, it dies. Well, that's wrong. <coughs> it should actually just give up and pass on to the next method down the line. No sensible person <coughs> would do that in a class hierarchy, but it still should work that way, okay? So the idea here is you don't have to care anymore, okay? If you want a, 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 a chunk of code that is private, meaning your method does not have it within the dispatch table, you can't call it, or I'm sorry, your class doesn't have it within the dispatch table, you can't call it as a method, you can't do anything like that, you can define it in your package. Now, it's public, of course, within the package, but ignoring that for now. Um, <laughs> because within the class, it's not. It's, it's not there. So you can actually begin to put in uh, private methods as this. You also have access to variables, so that could be a my foo and that could be private in there. Um, you could actually, if you wanted to make that do something, a code reference with a my, then you have privacy there, okay? And it just stays stays out of the class, it's not in your dispatch table, it's in there. And this also means that the underscore convention that a lot of people use for private methods really becomes protected, which honestly, that's how we all use it anyway. Everybody in this room, I'm sure, had once or twice in a dark corner, hiding away somewhere, overridden an underscore method. Because you just needed to do it, and you couldn't go back and change it, and you couldn't fuck with the API that's been out, and your boss would kill you, all this kind of stuff. So making that into something that's actually maybe a little bit more legitimate, um, I think, is, is a good thing. We, we, we can all come out of our closets and stop hiding. Um, so. uh, have you still got to pass self around? Is there any way of making it more of a private method than a private subject? You do still have to pass self in, yes. Um, uh, can we make it a method? Probably. Um, will that add complexity? Certainly. Um, yeah, is it cool. worth it? I'm not sure. So, it, it's possible. Ten minutes. Can you do something right to gorge? I'm sorry? Can do something right to gorge? You're passing gorge to do something. Can it write to that? Uh, in this case, no, because the way Perl copies 
copy scalars and, and, and it strings. Doesn't, it doesn't copy, it calls by reference. Yeah, it assigns yes. elements in that underscore. Oh, right, right, okay, yes. If you, if you do the add underscore, yes, so yes, you can. Yes, cool. sorry. Mm -hmm. um, I should make a test for that. <laughs> <laughs> Preserve that behavior. <laughs> <laughs> and you have got a way to annotate subroutines or methods so that you could have do something annotated to make it look like private. So I, uh, the, 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 the metadata that I was showing before that <coughs> is how you define the extends, the, the uh, inheritance, and how you do um, <coughs> the, the is re, is re right in the, in the has. Conceptually, yes, you can add that to a method. I haven't figured out a syntax that's not but ugly because it's basically going to be parameters and then metadata. And it's two, two, uh, two sets of parentheses. It just kind of gets weird and ugly. So, square brackets. Uh, yes, square brackets. <laughs> <laughs> Throw a colon in there somewhere. <laughs> Ideally, yes, we'd like to have that. How we do it, I'm not exactly sure. I haven't figured that one out. But um, in, in theory, uh, you can go into the mop and do it. So you can add it from there. It's, it's more complex, but uh, if you have a syntax proposal, talk to me. Can you have DNS classes and classes? Um, <laughs> <laughs> Theoretically, probably, yeah. But, but then you can have a private class inside BAS, which is only accessible by BAS. I think the same good idea. Yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> it's a problem. Well, uh, we, we were actually talking, uh, uh, Jesse and I, um, uh, we're talking about anonymous classes and how it would work, and anonymous methods, like, do those make sense? Anonymous attributes don't make sense at all. If you don't have a name on it, then how are you going to dispatch on it? That, that was the question that sort of came up with. Um, so anonymous classes, so in theory, you could make an anonymous class and stash it in an in, in attribute. Um, that might give you that without having to play scoping tricks of where is it, you know, where, where's the class? But I because mean, then you could have the private inner class could extend right. another private class. <laughs> right. So you could share and do something. You could have a factory inside your factory. <laughs> This is Perl, so yeah, you'll probably be able to do it on some level at some point. Um, it's just how ugly and how evil you want to be. Um, we have MSP for that. Yeah, talk to Matt afterwards. He'll come up with a way to do it. Um, so uh, the the other nice part. So we talked about how uh, uh, you could define a private method or whatever in in a package. Uh, one of the ugly bits of moose is that we have to always clean out the namespace. Um, and we, we uh, whenever you import a function that you want to use, uh, it's sitting there in the class dispatch table, which is just so long. Um, but and you know how you know any sensible person can call it as a method, but it can be called as a method. So you have to clean it out. We have namespace clean and things like that. Um, you don't have to worry about it anymore. File is is a, is imported into the package, and then therefore is within the scope of the class. So you can just use it there. Um, this also introduces uh, build. Okay, so <coughs> uh, if you've written Java and you've written a constructor, okay, you know that you don't build the instance in the constructor. Constructor, you initialize it. Okay, and most other sensible OO languages, okay, there's some variation of that. You're never actually constructing the instance yourself. We're one of the few languages that still do that. Um, so build is actually more akin to a Java constructor. Um, it runs, it runs uh, in, in reverse MRL order from your, your, your most, or no, least derived class to your most derived class. Um, and, it, and it just runs all the initialization in between there. Um, we also have a corresponding demolish, um, which does the same thing in the other order on destruction. Um, and these actually are not in the dispatch table, okay? <coughs> The constructors and the destructors are separate elements within the uh, within the class definition itself, um, so they cannot be dispatched because it would make no fucking sense to dispatch them. <laughs> That's for initializing the instance, nothing more. And if you want to use the code inside there, put it in a method and call it from here. Okay, so be sensible about that. Is sort of where we're going with that. Um, will there be build logs? I'm sorry. Will there be build logs? Uh, maybe. Yeah, you can do some weird stuff, I'm sure. 
Um, Actually, yes. Yeah, so that, that's the end of the syntax. So I think we're five minutes here, so we have more questions. Where are the class methods? Class methods are wrong. <laughs> <laughs> You can get them, because a proper class method is actually a method on the meta class. Okay? So if you go here, all right, and you look in the prototype directory, and you look into the test directory, and I don't remember which one exactly, but if you want, I'll show it on you here after. You add a class to the meta class, and you do a custom meta class, um, which is as simple as, just as we had the extends and define the inheritance, if you put meta class, and add the meta class there, it'll use that to construct your class. Okay? So that's where you put the class methods because that's the proper place for it. Um, then they have access to the instance. Uh, then, then they're not mixed up. That's one of the things about profile that I really don't like too is that uh, a, a, a class, it, when you dispatch on a class, it's the same as if you dispatch an instance. I mean, it's all mixed up and muddled together there. And, and this causes lots of weirdness, <laughs> ugly stuff. Um, so you can't do it, but you can get there in the correct way. Uh, right now, no. We played around with that, like a has, a, you know, at yeah. foo, and it gets complicated because at foo is is not a reference, and so you would never want to return that. You just want to return a reference to it. So it's it's fuzzy whether this makes sense or not. Um, yeah, this context. What's that? Yeah, yeah. And then you open up that whole context. Like, but. Um, I think you should sort the array thing by instead of doing has at foo, you do has at dollar foo. Mm. And then so, so then you can use at foo to refer to the array, but your accessor refers to dollar foo, which is the reference. You just mentioned okay. that works for me. Write a test. <laughs> <laughs> Access. 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 The most running instance is the We had the is RO in there, maybe. Um, access to the underlying instance structure will be through, uh, so the, the mop pragma right now has, right now only has two, two functions to it, class of and uh, ID of, which gets you, uh, oh, that's actually a point I didn't mention. Um, the UUI, every, every class should have an ID and it shouldn't just be the memory address because not only can the memory address, is it not safe across processes and stuff like that, it's not even safe within a single execution. It can get reused. Perl reserves that right and I've never encountered it but I'm sure it happens. Um, so, so it should be, in my opinion, some kind of UUID that's both uh, process safe, uh, network safe, and machine safe. So it can be portable across all. Uh, so. Uh, so you have these New things that take you like to create variables. Why don't we just take a reference to one? Because it returns. If a method just returns slash dollar path, what's you, you're getting lexical. So it's easy to get a scalar variable. Yeah, yeah. You, you're not getting any fancy attribute or anything like that. So, so, so that reference that is still tied to the <coughs> Yes. And, and it holds. Mm -hmm. It yeah. contributes to the reference count. Uh, again, how robust that is in the prototype, I don't know. Okay. Write a test. <laughs> <laughs> Gareth was up before me, but... Oh, okay. Um, so, I don't know if I misheard you or misunderstood you earlier, but you said about uh, you can't be open class. Um, does the mob maintain, is it still mutable throughout? So, a bit leading, <laughs> we were talking about this last night, which is why I'm a little tired, because Jesse and I were up like two, <laughs> two debating this one. Um, one of the hardest things, one of the things that make, makes Moose slow and makes Moose difficult to speed up is the fact that it's always open all the time. So everything always has to be dynamic and everything always has to figure out where to, where to get it. So with this, we actually have an explicit finalized <coughs> in the class that builds a dispatch table and everything like that, does some optimization. That's the same as kind of making mutable. No, it's different. Um, you cannot use the class until it's finalized. So our thought was, if you want to reopen the class, it has to be transactional in some way. In other words, you have to throw it out, make the class completely unusable, fuck with it, close it again. <laughs> so, we're still debating about that. I'm happy to, to come into the debate. Let's talk about it. it I'm not sure how much, it's a trade-off. If, if, you, if you make it really, really flexible, you make it very hard to optimize. So, 
sorry, most of the time you just want to access it anyway, rather than it's rare to want to change it, but sometimes right. it's still useful. Yeah, yeah, introspection all works everywhere. Yeah. It's just a matter of whether you can it. So. I was just going to say, well, I'll say something else, I think. You know, just to make it scary, you said two core cool guys, there's at least five core cool committers in the okay. audience. <laughs> <laughs> I only know you two, so... Yeah, you've got two core cool committers you're clashing with, so we have somewhere else. Oh, that one's the front two. Okay, oh, so actually, it's all then. <laughs> <laughs> and the state was so you say you can't, oh, there's never mind it, uh, um, only scalar attributes at the moment. Does that mean at the moment also only scalar parameters? Because you had. Yeah, yeah, but okay. that's, it's, it's a limitation of the, the prototype. Yeah, yeah, it's a horrible limitation of um, prototypes. Yeah, no, it is. It is, it is. <laughs> Um, so I'm sure we can fix that. It's I, I was ready to test. To I want to test. Well, I to, <laughs> yeah, but I want to steal the solution from you. <laughs> okay. Well, give, us, give us time. <laughs> um, uh, you are not mentioning anything about type checks. Does this mean you are not planning for it, or you okay. decided not to? A type system in Perl, unfortunately, I think is a hopeless proposition. Good. Okay. <laughs> it would be nice to have, but you know, if, if you tried to type, okay, so somebody did a, uh, a, a type inferencing engine for a Google Summer of Code project a little while ago, okay, and it was great up until you had to deal with functions because the signature of a function is array of any returns array of any. Well. Oh, that doesn't tell you anything. No, we don't have anything any in array context. Right, in array context. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And, and one, of the, one of the really tricky things about Perl is that, you know, Randall always likes to say it's, it's strongly typed, which it is up until the point when Perl says, oh, oh, but you meant that, so let me just take care of that. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it coerces so much, it tries to dwim a lot. It, really resist the idea of any kind of strong typing, even though you do have a little bit of a strong type going on with your signals and things like that. So I purposely just punted on that. I don't want to be involved in that debate right now. Um, I'd rather, I'd, honestly, I'd rather, if we could get this in, great. We'll worry about types for 525. <laughs> <laughs> so. Ask you a question you wanted to make to ask. What's the parameter validation? Validation. Prangs validate. Maybe that's where we put the, um, uh, the method uh, metadata could potentially no. serve on that. No. <laughs> you, can, you can override like method execute though. Yes, yeah. that's true. That's true. You, you could again, you can get at it with the mod. If you want to, if you want to do some stuff, you could probably get out with the mod. If you build those on top of it, you yeah. yeah. Not like this. Okay. Thank you. Uh, okay. Okay. So, uh, it would be nice. Um, I'm not holding my breath, and I also don't think it should go in until we have it on CPAN. It's stable, enough people have used it, and it's, and it's, and it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's a proven thing. Um, we had a little bit of a mishap with 510. That was <laughs> smart match, give and win, stuff like that. You know, I mean, we don't need to repeat that, and, and honestly, it works off of CPAN. Right now, it'll be maybe faster, maybe a little bit more robust in core. It's just I thought part of the whole thing of moving modules out of core and onto the CPAN is so they can get updates faster. And I know there's been a lot of success stories that people are actually following to updates so they came out of core. But then at the same time, where it's being for obviously that might attract more people to build the language you can suddenly get so it can built in. Meaning, it can live as a module, it can live as a pragma. Um, without any actual core changes, so potentially it can get distributed. I, I mean, I'm, I'm open to whatever works, and if the core hackers. I was just going to say that there's nothing about Git, the, the blah 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 blah. Are there enough to form a lynch mob? <laughs> a lynch mob in the audience, they ain't lynched you yet, so you're doing fine. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, if we can get it, we can get it, we can't, we can't, it's on CPAN. I mean, hey, it's a pearl. Um, just to contribute to your debate, um, I feel that um, the dynamic nature is exactly what Perl is, and the, I, I fear that finalize is the opposite of that. Um, <coughs> it's, it is a little stricter than the normal Perl, but there's, there, there's a balance 
that has to be struck. Um, uh, I, I don't know who said it, but you know, easy things should be easy, and hard things should be possible. Um, it's a question of where you draw that line between easy and hard. Um, I think right now the ProLogic system is as, as awesome and as flexible as it is that we can write all this. I mean, this is written on top of it, you know. Uh, it, 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 it really is so hard to say at the point you want to inject a new method <coughs> do what you would have needed to do for you. Potentially. What, what I fear with that kind of stuff is that we'll end up like Ruby people and monkey patching and <coughs> I can't live with myself if I allow that. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's what I'm at, you know, at, hey, you should never add you, you should have to work hard to add a method to my class. If you want to do it to your class, it's much easier. You can do it within your class definition. But if you're adding to a class that you didn't write, you potentially don't have control over it, it should be a little hard, I think. So. <laughs> yeah, regarding monkey patching, I believe there's a totally up to me with patching some of the views on that. Okay. Um, but is the intention that programmers will write things directly, or are you thinking of providing another layer that will maybe write method modifiers? And um, that, that would be your choice. How, how deep do you want to go down the rabbit hole? Um, is there um, any plan to implement this on something that's more sane than statues and blocks? Um, yeah, we were talking in the cab over about how to not use statues. Um, but so the trick is, is that um, how do you make this work with, how, how do you subclass old school Perl with this? So if whatever dispatch mechanism we end up using in here can cooperate with the MRO mechanism, and that MRO mechanism can cooperate with whatever dispatch mechanism we have, in theory, it should be able to work in there, and then we don't have to do stashes and, and gloves. But right now, the stashes and gloves are kind of there to make it play together. 